Now, let me tell you how important it is not to get drips and runs on this because this is very, very, very sensitive to that. So notice the very, very oh, <laughs> uh, exacting technique that I have. Try to emulate it. It's going to be tough. Now, do you want me to hand do the pot? Um, no, I, uh, the one coat of this may be not enough, so usually I will let it absorb and then pour one more time on, and at that point, when I try to keep one hand dry, that I can reach over and get a pinch. If you take this much sugar and put it on your pot, you're going to have a black pot. So less is better, especially when you first start. Very typically, including my own when I first started this. I blacken the pot with too much horsehair, too much sugar, too many leaves. You'll get better results if you go a little bit less into, and then work your way up. So you don't want to leave un areas because they look really awful. They're, they're just kind of nasty white spots. Yeah, just uh, somewhere on the ground back there. Be good. Now, while this is moist and not where I'm getting it in the container, see that's about as much sugar as you need. No more than that. And if you go put grain on it. Have to, uh, do it while it's wet. Put what? Leaves. No, no. Uh, leaves, you wait until it's quit absorbing and it's not wet to the touch. And just as you're wrapping it up in the tin foil, you try to get the leaves to stick in there. I used to spray the leaves with contact adhesive. The contact adhesive leaves a really nasty surface on the pot, and, and uh, so I gave up on that. It just doesn't look finished. I love it. Quality control. Yeah. I think those were already busted. Yeah. Sometimes it just don't pass the sludge. Yeah. Now, uh, be careful. Don't leave a swamp in the inside of your pot and then stick it in the kiln. It's so full of water and, well, this stuff. You want to make sure that you get all the juice out of your pots. Okay, so. I'm going to do one more pour over the top of this pot and then before it absorbs I will get the sugar on it. The sugar looks really good when you get it on when it's real nice and wet. Notice I'm getting my pants out of the way and see that's more than plenty. I mean a salt shaker would like... You know salt shaker with sugar in it would be a great idea. In fact I thought of that and then forgot about it. <laughs> that was that My was tips to ceramic there you go. <laughs> the difference between you and me is you remember no, I'm, not, I'm not gonna uh, remember but <laughs> okay so this is ready to let to get to dry and then uh, I will move over there so what these these here this is for okay now my hands are clean and this is for pouring in here and then pour it on the next pot. So we don't have to go to the jug. See one, do one, teach one. So your turn. Come on in. I tried, woo! I tried wrapping the pot this way and I didn't get any good color up there at the top. I don't know why. Maybe it needs a little oxygen getting in. So, you know, the pottery voodoo where you think of this idea that it's just got to be that way. Well, this is my part of it. I, I always wrap to the top of the pot. Since I'm not going to do ferns, 
I'm going to get a couple of horsehair like this, and I'm going to wrap them into place. So one or the other? No. Well, you, you can do anything you want to do. Okay. So this has got sugar and horsehair. Sometimes, uh, usually if I do ferns, I just leave it sugar and ferns, but I, there's no... I don't I think there's a, a rule. I don't think there's an evil way to break do it. it. <laughs> Yeah. And then you just make nice baby. No. If you get it thicker, it may take more heat to get through and you'll have a color change. Mm. If you wrap this up while it's still wet, it'll leave crinkle marks on your pot where the ferric has got on the tin foil and stuff. Anyway, this is ready to go in the kiln with two or three other pieces of you guys'. So Let's set them up all along the fence so they don't get stumbled upon and, and uh, go ahead and keep going.